difficult, 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 difficult,
So where do you want to begin? Let's let's get well, in let's there. Talk you know? about just what uh, erectile dysfunction is. Um, the term erectile dysfunction is kind of like a catch-all because it's um, what's it when you can't uh, achieve an erection or you can't maintain an erection or you're. Uh, they also classify it as not feeling um, uh, sexually like your libido's not really mm-hmm. cranked up. Um, but there's like a million reasons why you could be suffering from erectile dysfunction. That's why I right. think it's sort of strange that it's like this one term, but it could just be so many different things. So, And it's not fair, I think, that it could be so many different things. But then I personally, I thought it was a lot emotional, but it turns out it's mainly 90% physical, 10% emotional, which I think that's a really, yeah. I thought it would be more emotional or at least like that's what happens to me when it has happened to me in the past. Like I feel like I'm doing something wrong. It's my fault as a woman not being able to pleasure my man and to now know it could be a, actually a physical health concern. Right. I think that well, that's I, really important. Totally. And I think also part of the reason why we haven't thought of much as much about it being a health concern is that um, when younger men experience uh, erectile dysfunction it can be health related but I think in those cases it tends to be more of a psychological thing or maybe linked to depression or something like that as opposed or like drinking too much as opposed to um, like heart disease Mm -hmm. you know that comes sort of later usually and not that it couldn't be if you're a Mm -hmm. young man Mm -hmm. but um, that uh, that I think our experiences with erectile dysfunction are probably more amongst younger men because that's how right you know, where we've been coming from in the tra- trajectory of our lives. Um, well, I'm going to read from Medical News Today, and according to some estimates, ED affects eight percent of males aged 20 th- through 29, and 11 percent of those aged 30 through 39, and then uh, males have a 40 percent chance of having it sometime. Uh, by their 40s and then it increases about 10 percent per, per decade right so, so it 50%, does percent uh, you, you yeah 50 right. you have about a 50 percent chance of experiencing it 60 60 percent chance mm-hmm. um yeah and i think that's another thing that's interesting though too is that like they consider a lot of doctors will sort of write it off and say oh it's just something that happens as you get older but it's really important to identify like where where it's coming from and not just write it off because one statistic that I thought was really interesting was that like a really large percentage of men who had had a heart attack had also had had erectile dysfunction within the last three years and um what that is telling you mm. is that the erectile dysfunction was a little bit of like a canary in the coal mine. And the, somebody re- wrote something along the lines of like, your penis is like your little heart. <laughs> and I was like, oh, oh okay. Because it, it has smaller um, blood vessels in it than your heart does. So when it's not working, it's an indicator that sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes mm-hmm. it can be an indicator that your heart is ha- going to be having, is having trouble pumping the blood into other parts of your body. Mm. So, um, that's why this stuff is important to take care of and and really look at from a million different ways. And I think that you're right that like it's really good to know and good to talk about amongst men and women that mm-hmm. uh, erectile dysfunction is a very commonly a physical problem. Mm-hmm. So it's not that you're not there's nothing wrong with you like sexually or like you know your manhood like don't exactly no it can be and also like with our and we talk about this stuff in our podcast a lot but like you know the western diet certainly doesn't aid in people's um ability to be healthy Mm -hmm. you know in terms of like heart disease and diabetes and um you know a lot of like weight weight related stuff they did say i know we just did an episode about intuitive eating and how (laughs) You're healthy in every size, and that can definitely be true. But sometimes you're a big size, and you're not as healthy. Mm-hmm. So um, we have to be mindful that that's also uh, can be a factor in ED mm-hmm. and lots of other things. Right. I was interested in just the history of erectile dysfunction, and believe it or not, since man has been on this earth, <laughs> there's been history of it. And the earliest recorded incident of ED comes from India in the eighth century BC. The popular theory among doctors at the time was that ED was caused by having sex with undesirable women. 
Yeah, love it. Let me just blame <laughs> blame us. Blame us. And treatments included herbal medicines with ad- additives from animals that were thought to increase desire and arousal. So they were chewing on alligators, mice, frogs, and sparrows <laughs> during that time. Cool. I also have, let's see. So in ancient Rome and Greece, remedies such as ingesting roasted wolf penis was suggested by the 13th century. And Romans would consume the genitalia of animals with high libidos, such as rabbits, and drink the semen of hawks and eagles. So, I mean, I think that we've come pretty far. Honestly, I feel like we haven't. I feel like you're still no. they're still blaming women for it. And, well, that's like, true, actually. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's kind of the same. No, but, but I don't all, think I don't yeah. think necessarily men necessarily blame women for. It. I feel like what here's the thing about this whole experience, as far as like I. I think the one one bad trajectory these this experience can take when you're in a sexual situation with and we're talking about like in a, well it doesn't have to be in a heterosexual relationship but I would say the reason why heterosexual relationship is p- particularly interesting in this case is that a woman doesn't know what it's like to have ED right so it's really hard then to communicate about it it's not just like oh yeah I get you it's like oh is this me you know and then women can get like weird about it and start to pull away from the relationship Mm -hmm. and then the man pulls away because he's feeling embarrassed and there's not a lot of communication around it and it just like builds and builds and if the woman is nasty about it then he can always say well it's because you're disgusting you know what I mean so like these kinds of cycles don't it's just not a very healthy the um, way to approach these troubles. Yes. But as far as medicine and modern medicine, thankfully, men are not eating roasted wolf testicles these days. But honestly, I don't know. Maybe eating a roasted wolf testicle is better than eating like, you know, a fried right. Twinkie. Well, you know what I mean? Yes. Yes. I think it's like yes. maybe more healthy. So I don't know that it's not better. Who knows? I don't know if you want to eat a fried wolf testicle. But one thing that occurs to me, too, is that, like, let's say you are a gentleman out there and you're struggling with erectile dysfunction and you haven't and you've, you're embarrassed about it and you don't like talking about it and you don't want to whatever. The first step is to go to the doctor. Mm-hmm. Go, the, go to the doctor, have all your things checked, because it could very easily be, like you were saying earlier, a physical issue. So you've got to take that care of that first. If it's not anything physical, mm-hmm. you've ruled that out mm-hmm. and it's something more psychological or whatever you it could be that you're on a medication that's like Mm -hmm. causing trouble or maybe you're dealing with depression or anxiety or you're stressed at work or there's like you know low self-esteem can also Mm -hmm. be a cause for all this Mm -hmm. um there are medications that can help like viagra and cialis and stuff but one thing i was hearing too is that um I don't know, you know, I don't know about Viagra, but uh, what I heard, too, is it's like if the desire isn't there, <clears throat> the drug won't work. Oh, really? Yeah. The, you, it's not just like it just goes like, boom, you know, it doesn't go like boing and then it's out huh. and whatever. It's that you have to like mentally and physically also want to be having sex in that moment. So I figure sometimes like things like depression, you may not mm. it may not work as well mm-hmm. for you. So there's the other thing is like, yes drugs and like sound wave tra- treatments but also if it's not physical stuff that's in your life um things like meditation mm. and like breathing exercises because what's interesting to me about this topic is what's the deal with it in modern times mm-hmm. right like has it gotten worse as time has gone on and i did couldn't find a lot about it but it a is little increasing. bit increasing yeah, it is that they were saying there is some increase mm-hmm. happening and they're expecting it to just get worse and worse. And I mean, again, it's like think of if if it's if it's majority coming from like heart disease, diabetes, obesity um, and then also things like depression and anxiety. If these are the reasons, of course, it's getting worse mm-hmm. because our world is not sustaining our mm-hmm. us as human beings in any mm-hmm. kind of healthy way. Depression is getting worse, in, mm-hmm. certainly in this country. More and more people are getting depressed. More and more people have anxiety. And then, of course, like, you know, we said that our, our diets are not that healthy. People aren't moving as much. You know, people mm-hmm. aren't exercising as much. So um, one thing that kind of, like, pisses me off about this <laughs> subject is that it's like, 
it's the world around you that's kind of like making it more and more likely that you're going to suffer with ED. But they still like to make you feel like, oh, it's because you're not manly enough. Mm, mm-hmm. Or it's because your wife is too ugly or something. Right. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's just like the most common story, I feel like, in the United States, in the Western world is, of this idea that like, you're, you as an individual are fucking up. Mm-hmm. It's not it's not the world around you. You got to pull right. yourself up by your bootstraps and make mm-hmm. it happen. It's like, no, actually, my environment is part like what's kind of causing this whole problem. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but no. But but God forbid, you know. Right. Capitalism and then they want to take. And then people feel shame and then totally. they will not go. And so uh, one statistic I read was 75 percent of men do not when they ha- suffer from ED, 75 percent of men will not go to the doctor for it. That's well, I think a, a huge percentage. Yeah. And I think partly it's because people don't always know that it is a physical. It right. can be a, it very frequently right. is a physical issue. Right. And people it's, don't want to talk about it. Right. I mean, I, I mean, when it's happened to me, honestly, truly, I, I really have. I mean, I think society has dictated. It's like it's either it's my fault or something, you know, like and then they get embarrassed and shut down. And so we can't have a good conversation about it. Um, right. And so it's just a cycle then. <laughs> right. It becomes like, a, and then also it can really destroy relationships because of the like lack of communication around it and the lack of comfort of the communication mm-hmm. around it. Mm-hmm. So there was a um, some sort of advice in terms of like, how do you, if you're a woman and you're trying to deal with a partner that has ED, like what is the best way to go about it? Mm-hmm. One is to be patient and to be, you know, thoughtful and and try to communicate, but don't try to communicate right after it happens. Mm. They were recommending that you wait, like, you know, give it some time, then come to your partner and be like, hey, like, let's just talk about this. You can come to your partner and say, ED is most usually caused by some physical situation. Mm-hmm. So I recommend that, you know, I, 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 I miss our past you know or how, where we can be and I'm worried about your health so like let's go to the doctor and if you want me to come and be supportive with you at the doctor then I would be happy to do that if you want to do it on your own that's also totally fine um, and there was a doctor that I was was talking about this and he said that like a lot of treatments that are the most successful for men with ED are with men who have uh, long-term partners who are active uh, in their like mm. recover or their their you know health recovery or whatever you'd call it Mm -hmm. um so there's that oh i also thought it was interesting that like some women will like shut down but Mm -hmm. some women will like the other instinct is like either you you shut down because you're like i'm so terrible and uh, i'm embarrassed too and i don't want to participate or frequently what will happen is a woman will like ramp up her sexuality i've been there too they'll be Mm -hmm. yeah so they'll be wearing like teddies and like trying to be like come on baby let's do it now or they'll try to really push 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 and that doesn't work either because it just puts more and more pressure on the situation so even if it is sort of like a physical issue um then psychological shit gets in there too because then there's like you know the embarrassment and it's just like this horrible horrible cycle and like you know whirlpool of so doom so if it happens what what then would be the right thing to do the right thing to do is to chill uh-huh be chill like out. don't have zero like you know um judgment about it to your mm-hmm. partner don't get don't act frustrated mm-hmm. don't act like oh again or any of that kind of stuff don't dote on it in the moment necessarily be like oh it's okay it's okay you know you can say like it's it's totally fine and then just drop it let the other partner kind of do what they need to do if they're you know if they're apologizing like it's just not a big deal drop it in the moment talk about it when you're not in bed together Mm. that's sort of what i mean by like wait some time before you bring it up talk about it and then they were saying the more like just sort of straightforward and non-emotional a mm-hmm. partner can be about it the better because it is a very emotional thing for mm-hmm. men and also men can be very uncomfortable with emotional issues not all men but like some men have a hard time with like dealing with these things so if you say like hey you know what like I listened to this podcast where they didn't do very good research but they did say <laughs> that, <laughs> that, um, that ED is primarily can be a, um, a physical issue uh, so like why don't we make a doctor's appointment and let me mm. be here for you if you need me to be here for you or not you know mm-hmm. um, and then the other thing that I think is really important and this is where I need the men to listen real carefully if you are listening out there is that we need to also make sure sh- this is where this concept this like p- 
patriarchal concept of sex is like really problematic because we've said it a million times on this podcast, mm-hmm. but sex is not just penis and vagina. Mm-hmm. So like you can still have, let's say you're going through this phase of trying to figure out this ED problem. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, if 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 part if one partner or the other does not want to have sex during that time, that's also fine. But there's also ways to have a sexual connection and a sexual life without the man coming necessarily. <laughs> yes, you know I mean? and this is what we have to remember. And maybe you can come in a different way. Like maybe if you're able to masturbate in the moment, then that's also something for now. And you get some sex toys if a woman feels like she needs a dick inside of her body or something in her body. There's all these ways you can work with it. And so, mm-hmm. like, it's not just, like, this idea that, like, oh, we can never have sex now because he can't get it up. It's like, that is the wrong way to think about sex. Mm-hmm. That is just the wrong way mm-hmm. to think about sex. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that the, um, and I would hope that that would also empower the man in that situation, too, to be like, I can still please my partner, even if yes. I'm struggling with a condition for the moment, for the time mm-hmm. being. Mm-hmm. And to think that, like, oh, it's it's just about me and I can't do this. It's like, it's not just about you (laughs) and you know there's a lot you can do to be connecting with your partner in a way that is not necessarily penis and vagina right and you know know me i'm a huge advocate for sex toys and that is a perfect example of when you know exploring yourself with different things and and with your partner and And exploring with your partner because that's the thing that starts to mess up the relationships is that then they just have zero sex the sex just fully leaves the relationship and then there's resentment builds and there's all these issues like that and my point is that like if you're up for it there's a lot you can do that's not just hard penetration right what vagina you right, know right uh, and i think the other thing too is that like um and this is something i think that women need to understand about ed is that uh, like a soft penis does not necessarily mean the man is not uh, like aroused or mm-hmm. not feeling mm-hmm. horny you know mm-hmm. so even i think depending on the, the for man to man even giving oral sex or doing things it still can feel good so it's not like it might be frustrating if they can't finish or something but again what are the ways to work around that so I think it's like about communication and again Mm -hmm. in terms of like what do we do about it Mm -hmm. Uh, it's about communication not just communication around the ED but just sexual connection communication right and the Mm -hmm. kind of communication you should be having in your sex life with or without dealing with ED Mm -hmm. you know you should be in a situation with and and also trying new things and being open to new things Um, because another thing a doctor said is that sometimes it can just be a matter of like getting to a certain point in arousal and then you're kind of good to go for some people and it's Mm kind of different for each man too Mm -hmm. so exploring what some of those things are but the main thing is like taking the shame out of it for both parties Mm -hmm. so the woman shouldn't feel like this is not my fault like and and uh, this doctor was also saying like just take your as a woman take yourself out of the equation in terms of like the cause yeah the causation of this or whatever Mm -hmm. and they said that like it's not that like it can never happen that someone doesn't get hard because of attraction you know Mm -hmm. but like that's sort of like very very rarely the problem because why Mm -hmm. why is that person in the bedroom with you at all at that point you know what i mean Mm -hmm. so but women really internalize that um as their problem when it really is right and the same thing that goes for wetness, like not being able to get wet. I feel like totally. I've had men kind of shut down because they think that they're not turning me on in some ways. But honestly, it was just something I ate or, you know, or just I'm wasted a, or something. Or I mean, wait, that's yeah. the other, oh, if and I'm that's stoned, the other, give me a break, you know? Yeah. So and there's I think lots of factors, but like what you're saying. And I think in my personal case, like I haven't experienced it a lot, a lot. But in the times where I feel like I've experienced someone ha- struggling with ED in the moment, it's usually because we drank too much. Yeah. You know, right. and that's another issue that like, what's that about? Right. Like why are there's so much sexual activity happening when people are really drunk? And like, what does that say about like our feelings about sex and our like, you know, what I mean, it's like we have to get wasted before we feel comfortable mm. sh- sh- sharing bodies mm. and stuff like that. Like that's another kind of issue. But it's not unrelated because um, alcohol and drugs are also a very high Mm -hmm. factor Factor of why um, yeah right like one of the causes for it so it's it is worth you know mentioning that like whiskey dick is real right (laughs) lord knows we've seen it but But what i'm hearing i don't know wait there's a word for it but like dry vag is also a real thing 
uh, absolutely when you're drunk you know like right. i know that that's when i have issues with that is like if i had too much drink and then i'm right. like mm, we should not do this but what i'm hearing is that if you actually in the moment are able to kind of communicate you're going to be able to find a deeper intimacy with your partner because yeah. of it i you know i mean totally this is why i mean maybe call me like an old lady now or something but i do the older i get the more and more i'm like wait to have sex with somebody like get to really know them and make sure you want to have sex with them and also i mean in your 20 i do whatever you want it's your body but for me this is what i'm just saying is that like the i want to have really good sex the older i get i want to have i want to feel safe i want it to be obviously consensual and like I'm learning all these things that I did not know in my 20s. So in my 20s, like when a man had whiskey dick or something, I took it on and and for weeks I would feel depressed that it was my fault. Whereas now, like, I'm like, oh, well, like it actually could be an empowering, th- empowering thing for the relationship to just communicate to each other and together figure out what the, not problem, but like, if I mean, if there is a health it's issue, a problem. I mean, yeah, right. There's so, usually it's not usually just because you're. A I'm just looking for a deeper intimacy. Have. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Rather than, <laughs> I used to love right. having having drunk sex with strangers. Don't get me totally. wrong. I love oh my god, it. it's so no, fun. Totally, I totally, <laughs> so and I don't. Yeah, but the older oh I get, and the more true crime podcasts I listen to. <laughs> right. Well, <laughs> like, I think. Wait that a minute. Th- it's like what we said on. There was another episode we did recently where there was some quote I read about how like good, like real, yes, yes, good sex actually doesn't happen on a one night stand like you just right. can't ever find the deeper more like and I do think from a not to get all hippy dippy on everybody but like from a more spiritual level like we have you know the puritanical American mindset around sex which is that it's dirty and it's kind of bad and you kind of just want to like do it quick and for procreation and even those of us that are not religious can carry this like you know ooh sex is dirty and ooh sex is like edgy and sex is nasty and whatever it's like yeah but it's not it's a thing that that humans do (laughs) right it's a thing it's a need it's a it's a it's how you were born it's like a very natural natural right yeah but it's very natural and mm-hmm. it's not this like crazy oh sex uh, it doesn't have to like we make it into that right so this idea too that it's like there's a whole other part of sex that we miss out on when we just turn it into this like ooh nasty like gangbang whatever mm-hmm. which is also fun i'm not saying there's anything wrong with that either <laughs> but like but just that like you know we miss out on this extra layer of like the connectedness of like what is what is it to be human on this planet what Mm. is it to be a spiritual being and even if you don't feel spiritual or you don't you're not religious you are a spiritual being because you can't tell me why you're here (laughs) you know what I mean you can't tell me where we go after we die Mm -hmm. there's something more Mm -hmm. going on here and um so I mean again I, I say that partly to say that like if you're experiencing like ed it's all it's very possibly because of this like very modernized world that's con- disconnecting mm. us from ourselves mm. and from like so our it's not your here. fault it's, it's not, not your, your fault. fault no there's no. way too much coming down yeah on us and right i mean now. the stress i mean I, I, the only thing i can kind of compare it to is like when you have to pee but like you feel like do you, i haven't had this in so long but when i was a kid i would get like em- maybe embarrassed about peeing or something or you'd be like i really need to pee but then i couldn't pee because i was like too it was in my head i'd be like oh, mm-hmm. i have to pee but i can't pee and oh my god and like they're gonna hear me pee or whatever it was like in a public restroom or something and like you just can't get to where you know you have to like really sit and wait around for <laughs> it to like come 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 to you right. i feel like that's like closest thing i can imagine to what that feels like when you mentally start to freak yourself out about it mm-hmm do you know what I mean? Right. But anyway, but I just mean that like, again, if one night stands are great and fine and whatever, but just know that like there's more to all this right. and you could be married mm-hmm. and still just be doing and still not be connecting fully. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's mm-hmm. very common, too, mm-hmm. because if we keep thinking that sex is just penis and vagina, man comes, maybe mm-hmm. woman comes. That's not it. You're not. We haven't. That's not it. <laughs> that's not why we are able to have you know orgasms and stuff just so that you know it's not about that (laughs) well if there's a man out there listening and they would like to know of other men who have also suffered from ed i thought it would be fun to kind of share that um jack nicholson (laughs) 
has suffered from it. Uh, Michael Douglas regularly takes Viagra to please his wife, Catherine Zeta-Jones. Bless his sweet dead soul, Rush Limbaugh. Uh, He was actually detained at an airport for carrying Viagra prescribed under a different name. Um, but see, but even that, I mean, I don't, I know, the shame knows, I don't of, give a shit about Rush Limbaugh. Yeah, but right. the shame that he feels that he can't, like, that is, we need to get rid of that yeah. entirely. Oh, I know. Well, Zach Efron has taken Viagra, uh, Ben Affleck. I mean, how do we, Ashton where, Kutcher. How do you know this? <laughs> uh, 50 Cent. I Googled it. Uh, <laughs> but how do they know? Are they, do they talk Hugh about Hugh Hefner, it? obviously. Uh, or I did. Um, Frank Ocean. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, the point is, is on like lots of people. <laughs> yeah. I mean, who knows? I don't know about those. Statistics, but but even so, the point is that like, yeah, they probably have lots of you know, people, lots and lots and lots and lots of people. And if you and if you haven't yet, you you very well likely might in the future, not to scare anybody, but um, but that's OK. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? I mean, you probably will, when you're 80. Please still have sex, y'all, when you're 80, and like take that Viagra and please. Unless your you really don't want to. I mean, that's the other thing. Unless you don't want to, don't. but I'm gonna get in that nursing home and I am gonna go crazy. You're gonna get an STD. Yeah. I'm going. I can't wait. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Finally. No. Yeah. no well, so the big sense. thing right now, I'm sure people have seen that um, erectile dysfunction has been in the news a lot because COVID 19. Oh, right. So I thought that that was an interesting thing to just quickly say why. So I read that I fe- found this article on um, Baker's Hos- Baker Hospital Review.com. And it's basically six things to know um, about why co- why they're seeing erectile dysfunction after a person has had COVID-19. And so um, there's six reasons that this hospital review has said. So pneumonia from COVID-19 can cause blood vessel inflammation. Um, so it, it's the blood flow. It's not, it doesn't, you know, it, it, the blood is not flowing properly. And so it's not being able to reach the penis. Uh, number two is pneumonia. And so it may cause lung damage. Um, so it, it could affect the body's ability to get sufficient oxygen into the blood, um, which can then lead to erectile dysfunction. Hmm. Um, the coronavirus may be able to infect testosterone producing cells. Uh, number four, arousal could be affected in a person's sense of smell, which was altered. Oh, could oh be altered. interesting. Yeah. Um, obviously, the pandemic's mental health effects can't be ignored. And then uh, the last one, I guess, like the most concerning thing here would be that erectile dysfunction related to the disease may be an indicator of other underlying vascular disease related sure. to COVID-19. So if that isn't a reason, you know, six reasons to get the vaccination. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, I just that really can we send that over to the Republicans? <laughs> well, what I don't what's scary I, I don't about know. that is like if it's um, COVID related like that, it makes it much harder to fix. Yes. Yeah. You know, if it's like because you are struggling with um, like if you're obese or something like there's something you can work on with right. with that right. you know but what i mean COVID. if it's a heart disease thing there's food you know you can try to eat like cleaner like less fried foods and there's there's sort mm-hmm. of active things you can take what scares me about the covid stuff is it's like if the covid if the covid comes in and like messes up with your messes up your like hormone your testosterone hormone making machine like that's going to be a lot harder to fix right Right. And it's, they're calling it long jogging. COVID. So it's yeah. just like this, yeah. this effect, this, you know, erectile dysfunction because of COVID is long lasting. Yeah. So that's terrifying. That's it really, terrifying. really, really scary. Yeah. Get vaccinated. Get vaccinated. So, so all this was just a tricky way to try to talk <laughs> into getting vaccinated. <laughs> well, you did hear about Tennessee, what we <laughs> they, they've just they're now saying, like, don't get any vaccinations like polio, uh, HPV. What is happening? Flu. I don't know. I've actually, I really don't know. I do not, I, I, my brain cannot understand why these Republicans in here in Tennessee that are running our freaking state are so against vaccinations. I don't know if it's just big government or like, or, or I think there's money somewhere. Be, I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea, but I don't know. So anyway, get vaccinated. Yeah. Have be open with your partner discuss these things trust and love and 
and be, be one with, with each Earth. other. <laughs> and I know it can be like frustrating, especially I know with some women who are uh, or, or couples that are trying to conceive, it can be especially oh, frustrating. But actually, that can also um, it can also just like lead to more stress and pressure. So you know, that this one article, the way they phrase it is, it's like they're like, this is a good time to treat your partner like your best friend. Oh, you know, and mm-hmm. and remember, like you know, you guys are together for a reason, and if you really love each other, then you'll help each other out on this, you know, journey. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. I don't know. Well, if this episode has turned you on, why not check out this website? Free stuff is awesome, but free stuff to spice up your bedroom is even better. Select almost any one item for 50% off, and then Adam and Eve loads on the free stuff. Enter offer code HORIO at checkout and get 10 tantalizing free gifts. A sexy item for him, a special gift for her, and a third item you'll both enjoy. And six free spicy movies. Ooh. Plus, free shipping. That's HORIO. W-H-O-R-E-O. HORIO at adamandeve.com. Well, anyway, there we are talking about more things we don't know anything about. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, if anything, uh, I just hope that, you know, the 75% of men that do not go to the doctor for go this. Go to the doctor. Go to the doctor. Go to the doctor. Or if you know? you're struggling with it and you're embarrassed and you don't know what's going on, like, go to the doctor partially because if you're having this problem, I did find the statistic, it's 80% of men that have a heart attack. 80% of men that have a heart attack have uh, had ED within the last three years. Oh, so ju- oh my goodness. just for that reason alone, if you're struggling with it and you're not sure what's going on, just make sure it's not that. Hmm. Just go and make sure it's not that. Right. Yeah. Uh, oh, you guys. Well, thank you all so much for listening. Write us in if you have any experiences in this. We'd love to hear from you. Difficult Women Podcast at gmail.com. Please rate and review us. That always helps our algorithm. And with that, we say adieu. Adieu.